Welcome friends to another r slash malicious compliance video. Imagine being told that you can't wear shorts to work, so you make a bold compliance and choice to really stick it to them. We got that awesome story coming first, but first a story by Hadak Ura, a past malicious compliance at a CNC company. I recently started working at a company specializing in high-end CNC work. Think aerospace, automotive and defense contracts that run in three shifts, 24 hours a day, so they can keep the machines running. This is not my malicious compliance, but rather past compliance that I was told about that I'm now reaping the benefits of. When I started, I was told that employees were free to take their 30-minute paid lunch whenever they wanted. How nice, I thought. A company that's not micromanaging. After talking with some of the old-timers, I discovered the reason this policy was put back into place. Some background first, a CNC machine is essentially an automated mill. You stick a metal billet or casting into it, it does some magic, and a machined parts created. Lots of cuts made, holes drilled and tapped, all very precisely. This process can take minutes or hours based on how much or how precise machining takes place. Generally, the more expensive the part, the more time spent on the machine. The story is that a new manager was hired several years ago and immediately set about improving production. Apparently part of their grand plan was having everyone take their lunches at exactly the same time, so as to provide accountability. Since everyone was taking lunches at various times, the theory was that people taking 32 minutes instead of 30 was costing productivity and thus could be improved. No one actually had any record of these 32 minute breaks, but they must have been going on, right? Since most of the processes took longer than 30 minutes, people would take their breaks so that they had placed a part in, one on lunch, and then came back to continue the job, mostly checking that the previously made part was within tolerance, as the CNC machine worked through the time spent on break. The new system meant that people would take their lunches and the machines were left in downtime. The most dreadful thing an owner can imagine. No one there to put new parts into the machine means machines not running, which means parts not being completed, which means money not being made. People would stop work at precisely lunchtime, regardless if that meant the machine would stand idle without a part to work on. Machinists would arrive precisely 30 minutes later to start up again. Since the longer processes were the most affected, the most expensive parts were the heaviest hit. Production slumped, shipments got delayed, customers were angry, and eventually the new manager was fired. The policy was returned to its original, take it whenever, just please don't let the machine stop, form. Would you guys agree with me when I say forcing everybody to take their lunch at the same time feels almost juvenile? Almost like an embarrassing, okay kids, time for lunch type of situation? Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Our next story is by TSL Knox, complied to the production planner until he was forced to change his ways. I'm working at a factory making brake tubes. We operate at a pretty high number, around 30,000 finished tubes per 24 hours. Our former planner was, in my and my co-workers opinions, pretty good at her job, but she quit recently and we got a new guy. Not new at the company and probably knows his job well, but from his first production plan for the week, it was clear he never even stopped to think or ask how do the things work at our workplace. To clarify some processes, Warehouse gives us raw tubes. We put screws on them and flare the ends, form something like a mushroom on both ends of the tube. Search brake line flare on Google images to get a picture, and we pack the finished products in big metal boxes in which the raw tubes also come, so we reuse the boxes when they're empty. We follow the new plan closely, only switching some clearly non-optimal ordering. Stuff like 1. Changing tools to set 1, 2. Making tubes for an hour, 3. Changing tools to set 2, 4. Making tubes with those tools for another hour, 5. Returning the tool set 1, and continuing production, as it's more optimal to try to keep tools switching, thus machine downtime as rare as possible. When you don't change tools, different products just have different tube lengths and different screws, but you don't need to adjust settings to make the product within dimensional tolerances. Sorry, I digress. Also, when the plan was for 4,000 parts of one type, and we had materials for 4,500 parts, we finished it all to avoid adding warehouse manipulators for more work, 
to avoid adding warehouse manipulators more work with putting the remaining materials back in the warehouse, and also to get one free metal box that manipulators didn't have to bring, and also, more often than not, we're short of the boxes we need. All troubles peaked when I had an afternoon shift and I was there by myself. Usually we're two setters on a shift, but my shift coworker was sick. And so to make things easier for me, the morning shift kept the tool set they were using and I jumped to the end of the plan to do 250 tubes with the same tool set so I don't have to change tool sets twice and then jump back and change the tool set only once. I finished the product, changed tools, and my boss came to tell me the customer called that they don't want the tubes anymore, so we shouldn't have made them. If I went along with the plan, I wouldn't have made them. Alright, that was our fault, we admitted. But then the planner guy wrote us an angry email telling us 1. To follow the plan exactly as he made it. 2. To not make more tubes than the plan calls for. Now the malicious compliance finally begins. We all decided to stick to the letter exactly. 200 pieces of 1 meter long tube remains in 5 meters long box? Send it back to the warehouse. Changing tools 4 times in 4 hours when we could just do it once? Alright, more downtime, less work for us. The first two shifts next week returned 7 boxes to the warehouse. We had slightly more work because when we ran out of metal boxes, which were sitting in the warehouse, with 200 to 500 raw tubes inside them, we had to use wooden boxes which are narrower, so you only put slightly more than half the amount compared to the metal box, but we persevered. Finally, this week on a boss's meeting, they found out our effectivity went down. Not by much, but still. A warehouse leader complained that his staff had to move more boxes than before, and suddenly, we're told we can finish raw tubes if there's less than around 700 tubes. And we can move around the plan order if it's too wrongly ordered. Also, the planner finally accepted our input on how to plan, so we don't have too much downtime changing tool sets. This is all one big exercise and just trusting the people who are experienced in doing the hands-on work. People above them that aren't actually on the field are trying to organize these things, and they're not relying on the feedback of the people in said field. No wonder your planning's falling apart. You don't actually know what's going on and what's optimal and you refuse to listen to the people who can tell you. By the way, if you're enjoying these stories, make sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons down below so you never miss any of my daily uploads. There's a bunch of awesome stories like this next one by Donter Max. Oh, I'll take that trip, all right. Hi everyone, I'd like to share the story of how I maliciously complied to make sure I get to take a long-awaited Italy round trip. First off, I've always loved Italy. Me and my family went there basically every year until I graduated school, started studying and becoming independent, and had less time and no funds to go to Italy with my family. I did however find a nice job in a swimming pool as a lifeguard. It paid quite well, and I could choose a lot of my own hours, and in between semesters, I could give extra swimming lessons for some more money. After a few semesters, I had a nice amount of money saved, and decided that I could spare some of it to finally visit Italy again. I wanted to make it special, and visit places I've already been to with my family, but also some new places, all in one trip, so I decided to go mostly by train. My route started in the north at the beautiful lakes. I'll go de Garda specifically, then I'd visit Milan for a day, take a train to Rome, and then Napoli. From there I'd make my way to a small town called Villa San Giovanni, because from there I could take a ferry to Messina, Sicily. The last few days I'd spend traveling from Messina to Catania, to a small village called Piazza Amarina, I know some guys there because of an exchange my school did, and finally to Palermo, from where I'd take the plane back to my hometown. Sorry for that long paragraph, but I got lost in the memories to that trip. This trip was planned for August of 2019, and at the beginning of April, I asked my supervisor for my time off. He didn't want to give me that much time off at once because it meant a lot more work for him. Smart as he was, he decided to offer me a deal. I'd take over the early Saturday shift forever, which at that point everyone despised and my supermarket always had to take it. In exchange, he'd give me my holiday time. I just looked him in the eyes and said, I've never taken time off so far. I'm rarely sick and I've planned that trip for a long time. I would do anything to go on that trip, including quitting. 
He again thought he was smart and said, You can try quitting, but I wonder how you'll pay for that trip then. I also know what you're thinking, so let me make it clear that you can try to find another, maybe even better job, but no other job will come close. So I did exactly what he suggested. I tried to find another job, but it seemed to be right. There really were no comparable ones. That was until Easter holiday season came around, and I could give two weeks of swimming lessons. I usually chat with parents whenever I have time, mostly while the kids are changing, and that one day I found out that basically all of them came from rather far away. There was another swimming pool close to them, but that one didn't offer lessons. So I decided to give the pool, which was closer to me too by the way, a call and ask if they'd be interested in hiring me to give lessons. They were hesitant at first, until the parent offered to speak to them and confirm that there'd be lots of other parents who would love lessons there. So they hired me, starting in September of 2019, a few weeks after I returned from Italy. I went to my old, at that time still recent, employer and gave them plenty of notice. It was April and I told them, in writing with confirmation, that I would be quitting, effective from the 1st of July. When they asked why I was quitting and why with such long notice, I just told them that I had some plans and I'll go to great lengths to pursue those plans. The trip was incredible. With COVID going around, I haven't traveled anywhere, and I saved up a lot to go again once I feel safe to do so. That time with my girlfriend with an extra stop at the Costera Amalfitana. Honestly, good on OP for just putting that hustle in and working hard to get exactly what they want. Getting that secondary gig at that other pool teaching people how to swim was such a smart move. Just being able to put yourself out there and market yourself so you can make some extra cash and make it easier for you to do the things that you want to do and stick it to the people who said that you wouldn't be able to do so. And our final story of the day is by Bear MC. Boss said no shorts. I work at an office that sells bulk goods to businesses that use them, like retail outlets, etc. Our office doesn't usually have a strict dress code, but recently we got a new boss, Jerk, who is quite literally the stick up my butt. He's constantly yelling at everyone about basic stuff, like punching in a minute or two later early, or being a word or two off the script during outbound or inbound calls. Dealing with him in general has made me hate the job more. As it's getting hotter, I've been wearing khaki shorts to work for the past few days, which is something I've always done for the past few years, and nobody's confronted me about it before. So I figured nothing would change this year, but boy was I wrong. About halfway through my shift, this boss comes to my desk and realizes I'm wearing shorts and is visibly annoyed. He mutters something under his breath and goes back to his office. An hour later, I was called into his office where he proceeded to berate me about breaking dress code. He was fuming and ended the meeting with, From now on, you follow dress code to the book or you're fired. Say no more, boss. That night, I went home and read up on the dress code rules. There was in fact a rule against shorts, so I was annoyed but kept on, and then I found it. There's no rule preventing males to wear skirts or kilts. Here's where I devised my plan. I immediately ordered a pink and white striped kilt online, as well as matching knee-high socks and shirt. There was no rule stating in the dress code against any of this, surprisingly. About a week later, the clothes arrived, and here's what ensued the following workday. I walked in wearing my new pink business outfit and immediately the whole office is staring at me and the boss who came in to cover another boss's shift in the morning was beat red in the face and yelled at me to come to his office. He goes on a 10 minute rant about how I'm a useless employee and that he's going to fire me for not following the dress code to a T. I simply stated, I'm in dress code, I urge you to read the employee handbook. He ended up reading the whole thing in front of me and I could see him getting more and more angry as he realized I didn't break any rules. I asked him, am I free to go back to work? And he looked at me with a death glare, muttered something under his breath and waved me off. Honestly, if you're working in a place and it's kind of hot, it's humid, especially like a tropical climate, I feel like it's nearly inhumane to deny people being able to wear shorts. Maybe LP will come to appreciate the new skirt or kilt. Maybe they'll find it a breezy addition to their business attire. 
But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. So of all these stories I've read today, which is your favorite and why? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you haven't yet, if you could like and subscribe, that would mean a lot to me. Whatever you do, whether it's liking, subscribing, turning notifications on, all of it helps grow this channel and I appreciate the heck out of it. So until next time, I'll see you all tomorrow with some more stories.